guys. It's that time again. It's time for another flip through. This is, uh, what is this? This is Sorcerer's Revenge. This is book three. Ha <laughs> ha! Book three in the Coalition Wars for Rifts. Book from, uh, for Rifts from Palladium. Uh, books. And this one is, um, a little different. That's pretty cool. It was interesting to read. Uh, and we're going to start off, you know, at the beginning. Actually, we're going to, you know, I'm going to shed up some of my favorite art here. Uh, I'm going to take screenshots. There's a couple pictures that I really enjoyed. Uh, this book, uh, Sorcerer's Revenge, starts off with two videos in the beginning um, that are basically, you know, you, throughout the books we've had the same soldier guy. Uh, what's his name? Sergeant Dion from Canton. Uh, sends a video to his wife every time, and this time... He's talking about missing his kids and, you know, the DBs and stuff that's going on. You know, things. And the reason why I bring this up is because it's kind of like a precursor to some things that are going to happen. I don't want to give you too much details, but uh, he's talking about people in it. And basically the, the quote that sticks in my mind, so he does what we got to do. In other words, we're soldiers and we're here taking orders. Um, and talking about shooting things, things down, and he's coming to terms with how some of the people are like, for example, um, them DB kids. Uh, he's he's having a hard time dealing with shooting DB children and things of that nature. So it kind of the reason I like the video is it kind of brings the conflict and the confrontation a little bit more to the front. Of the book uh, a little bit more than some of the other ones done have done and I don't think so far I don't think any of the books have lived up to the first book uh, that, but that could change in the next the next book or the last book now uh, in comparison let's see hold on a second so book two is maybe wait a minute oh, there we go. I didn't notice that before, is about the same thickness, and they're both roughly 100 pages, whereas book one is like 160 or so, yeah, 160 pages-ish. So there's a little bit more meat to it, and I think uh, Coalition Overkill followed in with Coalition Wars a little bit different. Now this book, the first thing it does really is, you know, you got your introduction like you do with every Palladium book. They follow that same basic format, right? And then it follows into uh, some of the new races. Um, and and um, historically speaking, I'm not sure if this was the first introduction of some of them, but the one that sticks in my mind more than anything is the Auto G. Yeah, the Auto G. Um, and they go into, obviously into detail about some new DBs. And it being Sorcerer's Revenge, the book does focus more on... Um, Tolkien or DBs and sorcerers than the other books do. Uh, and the auto G is basically a slang term for uh, autogenetic, which means they're basically like super shapeshifters. Uh, and then we have the Larmark, which I actually love the picture of the Larmark. Oh, well, I'll, I'll take a photo of it for you. Um, and the Carmack, or Carmack, <laughs> I can read, it's Larmack, it's not a C. That's just my terrible handwriting on my notes. Or, uh, as it's been put, I think they were the ones that are called the Melonheads. Um, and then the book, I mean... The book doesn't. The book really gets into some heavy detail around page. Let's see. I'm just going to cheat and use the. Yeah, page 16. So by page 16, you're into where it starts getting into the meat of the book, and where I find this is where the book really kind of takes shape. Of the three books that I have read so far for Coalition Wars, this book is the first one to have kind of what I expected some of the other books to be like. And this book has the Notorious of Tolkien. So it has a lot of factions, groups, NPCs in it. Uh, 
and I did start reading the next book, and some of them are mentioned in the next book and have a role play. Uh, for example, let's see, where's the first? It's, it's like one of the first groups that's mentioned. But, um, you know, there's some great art in this book as far as, I think it's, actually, I think it's these guys. Yeah. Uh, the first Calgary Volunteers. Um, basically, it's a group of cyber knights. And Sir Buckabo is one of the ones that comes up late, later on in one of the other books. Um, but again, it's a lot of details about their personalities and their characters. And, you know, for the most part, my actually, the, the guys from Calgary, the first Calgary squad, are probably my favorite mention in this book with the caliber street irregulars. I just love the concept behind the irregulars. They, uh, there they are. Um, they're, they're hanging, they were hanging out in the burbs of Chi Town. And then uh, when the coalition came through on one of their sweeps that they occasionally come through, they had to run for their lives. And basically, the way the story is written, there's not enough information for me to say that they headed to Tolkien for shelter or if they ended up there and ended up fighting with them. They're not necessarily happy or unhappy that they're there. It doesn't really say one way or the other. I think they're, you know, I, I think I like that part of the story because the GM gets to decide whether or not they're hating the coalition or whether they're realizing it was their error as to why they're there or things of that nature. Um, and then one of the better things about this book and this it's actually one of the other things that really shapes this book as to what it is and they have an adventure guide um, in some ways I when I was reading the book I kind of felt it was out of place and when I say out of place I don't mean its location in the book I mean in the fact that it's in coalition wars it seems like something that would have been better suited in the game master's guide or uh, one of the core books um, but it's here and that's what really kind of gives this book a lot of its flavor. The other thing that is in here, uh, page 96, they have a, a little story about Prosik behind enemy lines. Uh, slash, advent well, it's one of the, actually, it's one of the, it's, it's actually an adventure if I remember correctly. I read this about three weeks ago. Sorry, guys. Um... It's an adventure outline for Lost Behind Enemy Lines, and it's about Emperor Prosek being behind enemy lines. Now, you can take that and you can change that to any character, I'm sure. Uh, it was one of the cooler things. It has a hook, line, and sinker, which is one of the things that I love about Rifts, uh, because you can have a loose story. And it's really more so than other role-playing games. Yeah, there, you can say what you want about Rifts. Combat can be long and drawn out. Uh, that's true with Dungeons & Dragons. That's true with Pathfinder. It can be long and drawn out. You can have magic that's overpowered, whatever. You take your argument and you argue with yourself all you want. More so than other games, Rifts is much, much more about the story. And that's why their books are written the way they're written. And that's, that's, it's that simple. It's all there is to it. Um, then the other one is Blitzkrieg. This is, this is actually the smallest section of Sorcerer's Revenge. And it talks about how... Tolkien goes on an all-out war against the Coalition. Uh, it lasts, let's see, it starts on page 100, I think. Eh, we're going to say 101 because the one page is all art. And then it pretty much finishes out the book um, with a little step on 109. So there's not a lot of information. Um, it's more like... Uh, a broad timeline, right? But then the last part of the book, we discuss Shadow Dragons, uh, which are really cool in their own right. They, they, they are like, um, I don't want to say apparitions, but they're more like, uh, I guess shadows is the best word. It's like an extension of their, of their dragon selves and how they work within the Rifts universe, or at least in the area of Tolkien. Um, and there's like four or five pages on them. So, like I said, I mentioned that this book's a little bit different than the others. I think um, that this book was created because it doesn't really fit in the other books. 
Uh, it doesn't follow the same style in the sense that the other books have more story outline stuff. They're a little, they seem a little bit more sandboxy. This is more like a resource guide for the game master, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, it's still book three. It still fits in the series because that's where it belongs in the series, right? Um, but it's more like, could you, you, you could have maybe put this at the end of Overkill. Um, but then you wouldn't have had a place for the part about the Sorcerer's Revenge and their type of attack. So the way they put together the book, it's, um, it's treating, it, it treats the story like the Coalition is still the main focus of it, and these guys are more like GM's tools. Now you can obviously play the story the other way around if you want, but uh, the way they position it, the way they make the adventure guide, it's still like the sorcerers are the opposition. And I, I kind of like that, uh, in the sense that they, they went with the theme of this is the coalition, it's about the coalition, and it stays about the coalition all the way through. At least it has so far. Uh, the next book is going to be the cyber, about the Cyber Knights and their role in the uh, Coalition Wars campaign. So, what do I think in the end about its value and its worth? I don't necessarily think you need this to play a Coalition Wars campaign, but it'll certainly be helpful. Uh, it's a small book, like uh, Coalition Wars 2 is a relatively small book. They both have a $16 price point, which for a 100-page book nowadays, that's pretty, that's pretty fair. Uh, I mean, you grab some of the other books from other role-playing games that have 50, 60 pages and they're like 14 or $15. So you're still getting a lot of content with these. Uh, like I said, story fluff-wise, sandboxy-wise, it doesn't have the same feel as the other books. This is much more like... I, it's not really... It's, I, I won't go as far as to say it is a resource book or a source book uh, because it's very focused just on the, like the notorious people of... Tolkien and what they're capable of and it doesn't really have a lot of like new equipment or monsters or thing like that It only has a handful of races So it's almost like it was a splat book um, That That provides valuable information for the GM to fluff out his story Anyway, thanks for watching guys. This has been a flip through with Matt Lemke on Sorcerer's Revenge Rawr. They are they are angry um, I will say that after getting all the story I got in these, I was really looking forward to more stuff from the sorcerer's point of view, and there wasn't as much fluff on it as I thought there was going to be. Um, Ten pages, but there's enough fluff in the other stuff telling you, I mean, you thoroughly learn about these different groups that are participating in the war. Thoroughly. So, they make up for it. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.